Um, I think it's important to try to understand more about where we come from, what makes us human, what makes us animal, what makes us more similar to non-human primates than not. We started working with this troop of baboons here at the Seneca Park Zoo. Uh, these baboons had never participated in an experimental task before, and so that presented a great opportunity for us to uh, test them for the first time on quantitative tasks to try to get a sense of, of what their spontaneous, wild numerical cognition might be like. I'm a primary keeper for the baboons, so I work with these guys five days a week. Baboons are very vocal. That's probably one of the biggest things they're known for. Their social structure is very unique. Their hierarchy is based on the adult male, Mancino. This is kind of his troop, and there's a pecking order, and so if you don't follow direction and wait your turn, you're basically going to have to pay for it. So there's a lot of screaming and fighting going on. The monkeys are very fond of Cheerios. We like to use those in the experiment. We presented them with a, a food quantity choice between two sets of objects that uh, differed in their numerical value and tested whether or not they were able to choose the larger quantity from those choices. Basically what we do is we show a monkey two different quantities in the palms of our hands. Then we place those in opaque cups and once the treat is in the opaque cup, the monkey can no longer see it. We then push it forward and wait for the monkey to make a choice of what he wants. We gave them one exposure to 27 different numerical pairs, and we found that by and large they were able to select a larger quantity. What this tells us is that without any prior training, without any exposure or experimental manipulation, that these animals have a spontaneous sense of quantities. Good job, buddy. We have two individuals that have been particularly good at the study, Pearl and Ursula. The great thing about them is that I found the most interesting through this whole process is they're on the bottom of the hierarchy. So they have to spend the extra time foraging and finding ways to get their food without anybody noticing. I think they've kind of developed a way to figure out how to get as much as possible in a short amount of time. One goal for the field is to sort of fill in uh, the evolutionary tree of, of cognition. So if we can test many different species, uh, you know, some of which are closely related to humans, some of which are more distantly related to humans, we can start to kind of trace a path of the history of our cognitive abilities and where they come from over evolutionary time. It's been a great learning experience for everybody. It's given us a brand new way to enrich them. We've actually found that giving them foraging opportunities and thinking opportunities like the research study and all that decreases the amount of fighting that we actually have in here. The more enriched you can make their lives, the better off they are as a troop and functioning and socializing with everybody. A production of the University of Rochester. Please visit us online and subscribe to our channel for more videos.